Hello, welcome to Organic Acting. What is Stanislavski's method of physical action? Well, today we're going to find out. One of Stanislavski's early techniques was emotion memory, where an actor could use his or her personal life and experiences and link those to the actor in some way to create emotion. So if an actor had to experience a very difficult time, an actor could remember a difficult time in their own lives. By the end of his career, Stanislavski had realized that emotion memory had a few flaws. First off, it put emphasis on emotion. A lot of actors using this were going straight for emotion, going for the result which was the last thing Stanislavski wanted. He found that a lot of actors were becoming self-indulgent by using emotion memory. Other practitioners, such as Grotowski and Chekhov, thought it was outright dangerous. No one should be using emotion memory because it, it could drive an actor crazy. It could be harmful to their health. It's quite interesting though that American method acting kept using emotion memory, or at least some of the practitioners through the method wanted to keep hold of it. They thought that emotion memory was a direct line to true emotion. So by the end of his career, Stanislavski had changed his mind, and you'll find with Stanislavski, he changed his mind throughout his career. He was always refining his system. He put emphasis on the method of physical action. Now this topic can be very, very deep and very technical, so I'm gonna try and simplify it as much as possible. The method of physical action, basically in layman's terms, means rather than sitting there with all your scripts and talking about the character until the cows come home and just, just theorizing everything, you get on the stage, you get in this rehearsal space, and you do. You perform, you experiment, you find the character beats, you find the character tempo, and it's through the doing that you can begin to experience. All of this is based on your character's given circumstances, of course, but just as importantly, based on what your character wants in that scene and how they are physically going to go about getting what they want. So for example, if you want as your character to get someone to leave the room, how are you going to do that physically? How are you going to get what you want? There are so many different ways of carrying this objective out. You could physically drag the other character out of the space. You could physically forcefully remove them. Or you could show them indifference. You could turn your back on them. You could be cruel to them in that respect. And the method of physical action is about experimenting with objectives and with physicality. Um, Stanislavski said you should experiment with everything from the size of the performance, go completely extreme over the top, while staying safe of course and respectful to your other actors, but um, experimenting with, with the size of your performance, make it big, make it small, um, experiment with tempo, how quickly, how slowly you do these things. And it really is just, it's like a playground. A lot of people, a lot of actors are quite um, unsure of themselves when they start experimenting with the method of physical action. But that's okay, that's the whole point. It's like any skill or any anything you practice. If you think about learning to play an instrument for the first time or learn how to drive a car, you, you're gonna feel uncomfortable. You, you're not sure how to do what you're supposed to do, but through experimentation through repetition through repeating these character beats you can start to feel more like your character and start to experience real emotion with time and frequent repetition this score becomes habitual an actor becomes so accustomed to all his objectives and their sequence that he cannot conceive of approaching his role otherwise habit plays a great part in creativeness 
Okay, so I can hear you all saying, that's fine, Chris, but how do we actually use the method of physical action? So let's give you a scenario or a little exercise you can use. Let's say you're working on a character and you've built your character, you've looked at the past life of the character, you looked at their given circumstances, you've looked at them physically, all the things that you would do when you're building a character. I made a video on building a character. If you are interested, I've linked it up above. When you've finished all of those tasks, all of that preparation work, you are to put yourself in a space somewhere, whether it's a rehearsal space or your living room, and you are not performing. You're not performing for anyone else. You're not really performing for yourself. Again, you are experimenting with the method of physical action. But using your character's given circumstances, you are going to give yourself a simple task or set of tasks. So your character might be a single mother who is getting themselves and their young child up in the morning ready to take them to nursery school and take themselves to work. You might be a train driver in a cold country who's getting up in the morning and making themselves breakfast. I don't know. Give yourself a scenario which makes sense to your character and their given circumstances. And then give yourself a series of objectives, simple objectives. I want to make my toast. How do you go about that? You're going to get the toast out of the bag. You're going to put the toast in the toaster, you're going to push the button down, you're going to wait, you might get the butter out of the fridge and a knife to spread it and a plate to put the toast on. Uh, you might be making yourself a cup of tea while you're waiting for the toast to, to toast. But think about all these actions you can do to achieve a simple objective. And hopefully you give yourself more than one objective. What do you do when your toast ready? Do you stand there and eat it? Do you go and sit down? You know, do you put some music on? Give yourself a series of objectives and think about how your character goes about achieving those objectives. They might be very different to the way you achieve them. If you've watched my video on building a character, your character might have a disability. They might have a different inner tempo to you, a different outer tempo. How would your character go about achieving those tasks, those objectives? And afterwards, just reflect on how it felt. If there was any emotion, there might have been, you might have had a, a lightning strike. You might have felt all these wonderful emotions about playing your character and achieving those objectives. You might not have felt anything. You might have felt confused and, and a little bit silly. That's okay as well. You're experimenting. Why did it feel strange? Why did it, did it not feel as natural as making toast would be for yourself in the morning? What is it that is different? And it's, again, this is the method of physical action. You're experimenting. You're learning how to drive a car. <laughs> You're learning how to play a guitar. It's, it's, it's just experimenting. You're finding beats. You're finding rhythm. You're finding size of performance, big, small. This is kind of an entry exercise into the method of physical action. A really important tool you have at your disposal when exploring the method of physical action is psychological actions. What are psychological actions, I hear you cry? Well, a psychological action is a word that you can use which is going to inform your delivery of a line and the physicality that you use in trying to achieve your objective. So psychological actions such as I inform, I interrogate, I fire, I freeze, I repel, all of these words, they sound a little strange, but if you were to put that psychological action, and it is psychological, it's something that is is an intention, it starts off as an intention, but then becomes physical. And if you're using words such as, I freeze, again, we're experimenting with how we would physically do that. So you can go completely over the top at first, 
you could try and do something out of Mortal Kombat where you freeze someone. You, you, you're not going to stay at that level, at that, 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 that size of performance. You can bring it down. Obviously, it's got to stay um, relevant to the given circumstances and the objective. But if you are used something, something extreme like freeze, how would you freeze someone to the spot? Maybe, maybe your objective is you, you can't let them leave the room. Maybe there's something dangerous outside and you've got to freeze them to the spot. How would you do that? physically without using magic <laughs> but how would you do that how, how would you make someone stay on the spot do you physically hold them in, pray, in place freeze them do you you know while using your your dialogue to, to freeze them in place maybe you're telling them telling them something that they they just have to hear and you can't go outside yep yeah? how are you gonna get them to freeze and going back to the idea of experimenting you can try all these different psychological words, these psychological actions, they might not work. You might put you know, one of the, the words on the wall and try it out and then go, that's, that's terrible. Get rid of it. You're experimenting. What psychological action will work? Remember, we're talking about the method of physical action. What word is gonna help you physicalize getting your objective? And you might have noticed that these psychological actions, these psychological words that I gave you, are all verbs. They are all doing words. So words like interrogate, freeze, fire, repel. They are all actions. They are all verbs. They are all physicalized. You can get a dictionary and go through them and find all the verbs that you want. They're all there. You can use any verb. Look at some of the ones I gave you, you know, I, I, I fire. How do you fire someone? Is it fire them with passion? Is it to try and burn them? Again, psychologically. Uh, but how would that turn into physicality? All of these are verbs you can find. Make your own, own verb list when you're working on a script, when you're working on a scene, when you're trying to find that character, you can use this verb list as a little, as a little, a little prompt system, as a, as a way to experiment. It's almost, it's almost like a, 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 a chemistry student uh, experimenting with, with, with different vials of, of, of acids and, and, and acetates, you know, and adding different things to the vial. What's going to happen? What, what, what reaction am I going to get? This is the whole point of the method of physical action, experimentation. So I filled your heads with a lot of theory there, um, a lot of ideas and exercises, but what does this all mean? Let's again try to simplify the method of physical action. It is getting away from theorizing and filling your heads up with too much nonsense before you've even begun to rehearse or block the play and definitely getting away from emotion memory. Uh, speaking personally, I hate emotion memory. I never use emotion memory because it makes the whole situation more about the actor than the character. So, my character has lost his job, his wife's left him, and there's a meteorite heading for the planet Earth. I'll just remember the time that my dog died, okay? If you're remembering a time from your past life, you are transposing or transplanting your life onto that character. You should be experiencing that character that character's given circumstances, that character's emotions, if possible. So the method of physical action is about doing, it's about getting on your feet into a rehearsal space, it's about experimenting, it's about trying to find the beat and the tempo of the character, what works, what doesn't work. Um, in layman's terms, it's get off your bum and start rehearsing. Have you used the method of physical action before? If not, are you going to use some of the exercises I've mentioned to you? As always, like, share, subscribe. It really helps me out. I've been Chris and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.